Welcome back. We are live at Coco's Pub. It is uh, 11 o'clock. I've, I haven't been on time all week. I, I, I've, every single guest has either been on late or, or later. Uh, for most of the week, but uh, we are uh, we're, we're we're on time today, and I don't even I'm not even keeping like a hard clock today. Um, well, Sig is going to be here a little later on, and Luke Jones is going to be here in an hour. Luke has never had a Coco's crab cake. Uh, John Hoey's never had a, a, a Coco's crab cake. Is that correct? I think that's accurate. Yeah. How are you from the Y? Um, why? I I just put up a picture because I was at Costas all day yesterday. Uh-huh. I didn't put any. I didn't sat. My son produced me yesterday, hanging out. He took no pictures of anything I did. I took no pictures. We went off the air twice. I got back on the air within three minutes. And then um, I cried five times yesterday because people were making me cry. Uh And we had a whole bunch of canned goods. And I got home at like 7 o'clock. My back hurt. I didn't have one picture on my phone. I didn't, take, oh, no. I didn't take any pictures. So I yelled out online, hey, take some pictures. Yeah, anybody took pictures? And then I got inundated with everybody who took pictures. So I put them all up. So today I put it up. And I just, I just my status was... Why not? Is what that there was my go. status. There Why not? Why not? Uh, John has been a member of YMCA for many years, and the Y. And I didn't even Marcella. I'm telling you, I had serendipity this morning. You're good. Marcella's gonna be the next guest. All right, so she's out here. Nice. This morning, I, I have a Pacifica belt buckle collection, about 120 belt buckles. They're from the 70s. They're all rock and roll belt buckles. Cool. I always try to theme myself and pick one that means something today, like. Um, I I, 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 I I picked the Peter Frampton one based on a song, you know, last week. You know, do you feel like we do? Oh, the yeah. day that the Orioles got sold, I wore that one. Okay, seriously. So this morning I'm in there about 7 o'clock, and I'm beating up. My back hurts, and it's day three, and I wonder why I did this and how. I know why I did this, but why I did this. And I looked up, and the first belt buckle I saw was the village people. Oh, yeah. So hang on. <laughs> hey, this had nothing to do with you. This has nothing to do with you until 30 seconds ago. I looked up at this village bu- people belt buckle, all right? And I said, I, I looked at it and I thought, all right, I'm in Lauraville. Right. And I'm thinking to myself, all right. And I thought of Marcella and I saw your face. And when I saw this, I thought of Harvey Myers. Harvey Myers was uh, the man who owned the Emerald Tavern. Okay. Back when I was the DJ there, and Marcy and I were there watching Sunday football, and every Sunday night, Harvey would run around the bar and give free beer out, and we would play YMCA. <laughs> and instead of young man, young man, we would right. yell, Harvey, <laughs> Harvey, nice. yep. you know, and, and, he yeah, would, yeah. and he would dance, and he was this big old jolly guy, <laughs> drank Diet Coke, and look at her laugh. She's laughing. She, I'm going to talk to you about this 20 memory. minutes. Good so memory. I wore this, and my wife, had, and I'm such a ball of energy. I wake my wife up at 620, and she hates that I'm, like, there, because I've right. been awake since 3 in the morning, and I'm a pretty high energy cat. And I yelled down the steps. I said, today's going to be a freaking awesome day. And she's right. like, why? And I'm like, I'm wearing my village people belt buckle. Uh oh. She's like, why? And I'm like, Harvey. And she's like, oh, that's awesome. And then I, I didn't realize till you sat down, and I just said, I just said the words YMCA. Right. I even say why not and didn't think of this. Right. This is true serendipity. serendipity. This is yeah. true serendipity that's right here. That's what that All word right? means. So there, I, I didn't cry talking about Harvey, but I might in 20 minutes. Yeah, so anyway. I, I've never met any members of the village people, but, you know. Every Man, they- year, Bobby Nick, the late, great Bobby Nick, would MC our, and DJ our Nasty Nice Guy Awards. Uh-huh. And every year, he would hand someone was the cop, someone <laughs> was the, <laughs> the Indian, someone was the police. You know, yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. I always had to be one of them. I usually was Elvis. He had this Elvis thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And me and my staff would get out and do the YMCA right, right. yeah. the hockey funny. games. They've done it at the seventh inning stretch in New York. For 50 years, right? Like, ever since. Yeah. Um, so it's, you have some branding. You have some branding, well, John. Well, yeah. You know? It's, you know, it's, that's an lo- interesting story. I mean, I, I, as you probably know, I didn't grow up as a Y guy. I, I came at, to do this job mid-career. And so it's, it's been funny. I don't know. Where did you come from? Tell everybody. <laughs> my audience needs to well, know. Well, professionally, I, I, spent most of my, I spent my career in the private sector. I worked for companies like Citibank. Uh, and then I, spent, I thought you were in the banking industry. And then like I a, spent yeah. 11 years working with Doug Becker at Sylvan, uh, and then joined him and several others to start a company called Laureate, which went on to become the largest for-profit higher ed company in the world. Banking education. And I now? also I also worked uh, in the apparel industry to start my career. Uh, so I was 
you know, I was a business guy. I enjoyed my career. I did a lot of international work business. Most, a lot of my career was international. So um, you flew I, a lot, is what you're saying? Yeah, you frequent flyer miles. I have way too many miles uh, and way too many stories. But uh, <laughs> which, next time, well, that's a rabbit hole. So uh, <laughs> I'm the, uh, you know, I'm I, I'm sort of the the guy you would never have expected in this role. So I, I never thought about the Y hole. I probably had been a member of maybe the Y once in my life. For, I went to the Dundalk Y when I was a boy. I was, I was, a boy. We swam I was there. Yeah. I was a member of the Y when I lived in Toronto for two years working for Citibank. Okay. It was near my, my place. I didn't know anyone. And so after work, I'd go there. I'd play some basketball, work out, meet, end up meeting just a group of people. So, I mean, that's my, it's not a very fascinating Y story, I have to confess. How long have you been at the Y? <sighs> A lot of years now. I was recruited to do this job in uh, 2006. So I have been there now uh, coming on to 18 years. I started when I was 17. <laughs> so uh, You lie, you don't get any free soup here today, John. Yeah. You know, uh, I figured I'm going to have too. to pay anyway. So. Hey, i got to ask you this because it's been controversial. Um, Maryland crab, cream of crab mix. You're a real Baltimore guy, right? Like, I am so, now. Yeah, like, I've lived it, here a long time. Yeah, I mean, like, I didn't, there was no such thing as the mix back yeah. in the day. This is kind of a new thing. No, know? I don't think you mix. You don't do it. You're against it? I'm Maryland crab. You know, cream of crab is great, but man, is that heavy. It's nice here. They put a little sherry in it here. It's I'm nice. I'm sure it is excellent. It's delicious. We know, that, you know, it does, I'm not saying it's not great. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, Maryland, straight Maryland crab soup. Nothing beats it. it. Yeah. I mean, that's the way I, I would roll. All right. So what's going on with the Y? Give me, tell our audience what the Y used to be and uh, what the Y is yeah. and where the Y is going. Well, all right. I'll try to make that really short because that's a... I got plenty of time. Yeah. Well, um, the interesting thing about the Y is we're, you know, a 170-plus year organization, right? So started during the Industrial Revolution, um, and started as a place for young men who were coming from the uh, uh, outlying areas into cities as we started to industrialize as a country, um, who were wreaking havoc <laughs> because they were uh, a bit out of control, first time in the city, you know. And there was uh, there's a lot of opportunity. A lot of opportunity in the 1800s to in Baltimore make City. Uh, yeah, Baltimore City. We were the fourth biggest city in the country yeah, at that time, and right? It, yeah. it started in London, but then came to Boston and sort of just came down that East Coast. Every the major city started a YMCA, and so um, was it, it a boxing thing at that point? No, no, it was originally started as a religious organization that helped young men get their act together, um, meet each other, and then it launched recreation as as a means of occupying time and intramural sports yeah, yeah right? and, and yeah. getting people active and so they weren't active doing other negative things or active doing positive things and then over time like so many things it had to evolve and adapt to meet the needs of a changing world changing community in the case of maryland central maryland baltimore a changing town um so if you then fast forward. So along the way, created a lot of things, invented a lot of things. The Y invented basketball. The Y invented volleyball. The Y invented uh, Father's Day. The Y invented. I could go down and it goes. The list goes on. A lot of things you wouldn't. The you Y wouldn't, invented uh, basketball. Okay. You know uh, that. Uh, you you probably right. know that. Well, Jim's James volleyball. James Nas 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 Naismith, Naismith, Springfield, Massachusetts. Volleyball. You go down the list. So. And those things were simply ways of coming up with programs or activities to, that came out of creative minds. But Father's Day was about dad and, and son, yes. or dad and daughter, maybe yeah. even then. Well, maybe about, not daughters then, About right? emphasizing the role of fathers. Right, okay. And then over time it became just another reason for somebody to buy you a golf shirt. Right, or a tie. <laughs> or a tie. Or you know, dinner at Coco's or something. That's well, that would be too. probably the most useful gift. I hope so, I hope so. Um, if you fast forward all the way to today, what we really are is we're an organization that serves the community but ultimately builds a sense of community. 
and it sells a healthy, inclusive, connected community. And we are not a religious organization anymore. We are, uh, we, we simply talk about the why. Um, we are actually, we serve more women than men. We serve, uh, we, our employee base is two thirds women. Um, but we're there to serve the community through a wide range of things. So I mean, most people know our, our centers, our big Y facilities, but we're the largest youth serving organization in the state. So we're the largest early childhood provider in the state. We are the largest community school provider in the state. Um, we serve probably as many seniors as virtually any entity you could name. So what we do is through various means, we reach people where they are, we serve individuals, families, communities to help make them healthier, more connected. We partner with families to help kids through life. You know, um, I'm a parent, you're a parent. You were a kid once. <laughs> I was a I kid was a kid once. at the Y in Dundalk, when, we, you know, yeah, and I'm sure it's changed. Neither one of us, I'm sure, we're perfect kids. I mean, maybe you were. Well, I mean, we, we, <laughs> I had, I had a great neighborhood and great yeah. parents. I'm from Dundalk in the '70s. Yeah, yeah. We had a support system there where so neighbors looked out for neighbors. We had a backyard to play in. I talked about St. Peter's Church yep. the last two days. We played stickball, but baseball. But you had a community, we, we whether you even thought out of each that, other that yeah. way or not. And those communities still exist. That's a blessing. But communities have frayed. And so, and I look, I grew up in New York, but same thing. I mean, we didn't even know it, but there were, you know, there were moms, I'm sure, looking out for us that we didn't even realize, you know, as we did dopey things around the community. Yeah. Harmless, but dopey things. Um, but we, that's, we're there to really support the community to, to help people stay healthy, active, uh, engaged with each other, engaged with their own families. And we do that through so many different programs. I always tell people, I can't list all our programs. It would look like the Dead Sea Scrolls. You can't operate at the scale we operate at unless you um, do a lot of different things. And you can't just do it out of our great Y family centers. You've got to be in schools. So we're in something like 80 schools around the region. Um, you, you know, you can't do it without providing early childhood because, you know, kids are at their most vulnerable uh, before they hit school. And parents need, need early childhood development and early childhood centers because they got to go to work. It's the hardest thing to do. Right. That's the hardest time in life. Is the hardest time in life. Sure. And so. For the parents. For we sure. take on the responsibility of serving people. We call it from cradle, and I, I shouldn't say grave, but from cradle to, you know, however long you can run this thing out. Right. <laughs> and um, it's really a very, uh, it's a dynamic organization. Um, we are, um, uh, you and I talked during the pandemic. You know, we went through the ringer during the pandemic, as you can imagine. Uh, but, you know, we're back, and we're, um, we've got a... Um, I think we've never been more relevant than we are today. Well, People, my question for you is, it, it, where's the nearest Y to here? This, I, or, or one that you could drive me to that's three or right. four miles away? Well, you would like this one. Okay. And you, I'm sure you've been to it. The Weinberg Y on 33rd Street where the old Memorial Stadium I was stood. there a day dedicated. I have a picture of Brooks Robinson. Yep. Luke's going to come in. Luke met Brooks Robinson that day. He'll still tell you about that. Yeah, I got yeah. pictures with him that day. And the old um, um, Ring of Honor sits in the gym there. Cal was there. The I was day just. Too, wasn't I was just there. I came from there to this interview, uh, and uh, Brooks. You know, there's Brooks's uh, sign on the Ring of Honor there. So uh, if I go over there right now, it's uh, roughly eleven fourteen on a Wednesday right. afternoon right now. Yeah. Drive. I, I told everybody, where's yeah, Coco's? I'm like near Memorial Stadium, yeah, near near yeah. Montebello. You yeah, know, you're like near two Morgan miles. State. You're yeah, yeah, I can miles. walk there. I mean, yeah. where Sig lives two blocks up, he's gonna be here this afternoon. We yeah. walk over to Memorial Stadium when we were in the '80s uh, back in the day. I'd yeah, park yeah. at his house, and we'd nice night, summertime, we take a walk. Yeah. Um, what ha What's going on? What, what am I gonna see when I walk? Oh, in? What yeah. did you just leave 45 minutes ago? You're gonna see the center of that community. Um, you're going to see a beautiful Y uh, that's got all the amenities that you would expect at a Y. You're going to see uh, a world-class 
uh, the Sherman Early Childhood Center, serving 110 kids, both traditional preschool and Head Start, which is federally funded. Uh, you're going to see um, the, the Cal Ripken Senior Youth Development Park right in the middle where the, where the field sat, where home plate was. I haven't done this, dude. You got to do no, this. No, no, I'm telling you, man, like... You're gonna, so, so, the, so let me tell the, you a story. The math on this is they left in 91. The football team played there and the Bay Sox played there until 98. Yep. I remember at the turn of the century, then Governor Schaefer and Controller Schaefer after that yeah, yep. was yelling about keeping the memorial up. Yeah. It was a big, big deal. It was a big yep. stink. I mean, I've been on here 32 years, John. So, like, yep. I've been through all yeah, of yeah. this. And then it got torn down, and I literally met my wife in 03, yep. and the first good five years of our marriage, I would refuse to drive down 33rd yeah. Street because the stanchions weren't there and it really, it made me cry. It well, made me really, really feel Well, let me tell empty, you. you. You know what I mean? To do that. But I went back and now I can do it. I, yeah. I don't have any, I don't think that way anymore. So I'm ready. I'm ready to come back and walk the base. Well, here's some good stories. I got a couple stories. I haven't done stories. that since 1998. All right. Well, I'm going to, you, you should meet me there someday. I'm done. I, well, I'm going to tell you a couple stories, if that's okay. You got that plenty, to plenty that. of time. All right. So I didn't grow up in Baltimore. I, I grew up in New York, right? Um, and uh, big, huge sports fan, baseball fan, played every sport. I grew up a big Mets fan. Uh, well, you had a better year in 69 than we did. We did, that's right. yes. Uh, I was born in Flushing, New York, so there's a reason. I that. walked out of the Len Dykstra <laughs> game, but that's another story. Yeah, yeah. I was at that game in 86. Yeah, Len's had his issues. Yeah, he did. Uh, so I was uh, working for Citibank and, uh, in New York. Um, and so did Strawberry and Good, but I'm just I'm, yeah, I got to kick, you, in, I gotta yeah, kick yeah. you a little bit. Yeah, You're yeah. Mets guy, so. 1989, I was working for Citibank. Um, I was in one of these um, roles where they moved me around every couple of years to experience different things. And I had the opportunity there. Um, actually, I was in New York. They moved me to Toronto for a couple of years. Um, and then it was the time for my next sort of rotation. And I had an opportunity to go one of three places. Seoul, Korea, um, back to New York, where I'm from, or to Baltimore. And I was like, well, first of all, I, I've never been to Baltimore. I thought in my head I eliminated Baltimore immediately. However, it turned out the, be the best job opportunity, the most interesting opportunity professionally was here in Baltimore in, at Citibank. So long story short, that's what I picked. I moved here, Baltimore, sight on scene. First. What I, year is this? I'm trying 1989, to... April. Okay, wow. so, so okay. I fly from Toronto to Baltimore. Toronto a, just had a new, yeah. new dome at the time. They yeah, had, yeah. yeah, they were just, yeah, they just opened it when I was mm -hmm. leaving. Right. And, um, so I remember I flew on a Friday night, it's a short flight, came into Baltimore to the airport, rented a car, and they were, Citibank was putting me up at Cross Keys, right? So I get up on a Saturday morning. I don't know anyone in Baltimore. I don't know anything about Baltimore. And I was like, what the heck am I going to do until I start work on Monday? So there was, used to be a little deli at Cross Keys. Of course. I went to the deli, got something to eat, and got a new, got the, the Baltimore Sun. The bar next door is yeah. where Billy Martin got in the fight. I right? know, oh, very right, so, well. Yeah, 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 oh, okay. yeah. Keep so going. I knew all that. So um, There was also a Rob Deer, Robin Yount throwdown in there yeah, one yeah. night that I had to, I was a reporter, I had to go to the oh, hospital, really? and I sat in the emergency room with Robin <laughs> Yount and Rob Deer. As a reporter, I walked in and asked him what happened in the emergency room. <laughs> I can imagine oh, they love that. <laughs> like, what? Three in the morning, I got sent on the sports desk <laughs> right. in the evening. Anyway. <laughs> right. This is 88 or 89. Yeah. So go ahead. So <laughs> I get the paper, and I realize there's an Orioles game. And I'm talking to the guy at the Cross Keys Deli, and I'm like, is Memorial Stadium anywhere near here? He's like, oh, my God, it's so close. So I bought a map. back. This is pre-internet. Oh, yeah. I bought a map. He showed me where it was. And I was like, wow. Told me, you know, so. So I'm going to have to park bumper to bumper? No. <laughs> well, there's part of the story. So I figured, go to a baseball game, right? Right. So I go. Right. And, uh, and yeah, and I go in and I park and I realize, wow, that guy parked right behind me. And there's a guy right in front of me. It was like a mob hit. Like, you can't get out of here. 
Uh, you know, the, you know, with the mop, they pull up right I, we, behind listen, you, in front my, of you. My, my family never drove to the game. We didn't have a car, but if we did, we still we took the bus. Right. We took the twenty three to the twenty two. The twenty two bus was waiting to get us out. You probably my dad got out and I faster. The first bus. You got out faster. We were in Highland. Well, Town I'm a New Yorker. I'm used to taking the subway to the game. So you right. know. exactly. Anyway, so I realized like I'm going to be here for this whole game because. But again, like what else did I have to you do? You can't leave. <laughs> so my first thing in Baltimore was to go to a baseball game, and Cal was playing short. Billy Ripken was the second baseman, and the father was the manager. At that was the, time. the why not team of yeah. Well, that was Frank Robinson was eighty nine. Yep. But yep, yep, yep. And uh, it was a good game. I believe they won. Um, so my first experience in Baltimore, literally, was going to Memorial Stadium. Right. So fast forward. Uh, I'm I'm I, I'm in Baltimore. I end up going back to New York for a while. Come back to Baltimore. Um, in 2006, I'm recruited to do this job. No interest in doing it. I don't know why. I turned them down three times. They kept coming after me. And after a while, I was like, all right, this seems like fun. I'll do it for a couple of years. And then I'll go back to the private sector. Shows how good I am at uh, career planning. But... Um, well, so, your heart took over. Yeah. Right? Literally, well, I, right? I mean, I, first of all, it was, a, it was a mess, and it was a good challenge. So they described to me as a turnaround, we need a business person. So, like, that's very appealing. Over time, it became a passion, right? So it went from an interesting professional challenge to a passion. So one, the, really the only why we had at the time that was in decent shape, the rest of them were disasters. Well, they probably had no money invested in them for yeah, a long, was, long time, right? Been no the Dundalk Y in 1990 yeah. looked like it did in 1970, probably, No investment, right? no strategy. But they had built that Y because, as you were saying, finally, after all the controversy around that site, they decided, uh, it was Schaefer and then O'Malley, as mayor, said, we're going to take give half of the site to the Y, but they must build a Y here and they must do whatever. And they gave half of the site to Getco, which was a, is a not-for-profit that serves uh, mostly seniors. So they built um, senior housing for low-income uh, older adults. Um, and so the, this was before my time. So they built a nice Y there. Um, but right in the middle, and there was a big circle, was the old field. And it was rubble. Nobody knew what to do with it, right? It was rubble. So here I am, this... Well, this, it's not like this hallowed cemetery. Exactly. You, you, you don't this know what to do with ball, it, right? All I know is I'm a massive baseball and sports fan. This was my first experience in Baltimore. So this ground was like... meant something to me. Everyone had you, an experience right? there, right? But right. for me, it meant like... All right, this, this was my orientation. <laughs> and it was great. It was fun. It was a baseball game in the middle of the day. Like, you got to have something wrong with you not to enjoy that. So I'm like, this is wrong because it was just a pile of dirt and rock and rubble. And I just said, this is not right. This, we've got to do something about this. And um, eventually, it took a couple years. Uh, it turned out a really close friend of mine was hired to be the head of development at the Ripken Foundation. I had not met Cal and Bill at that point, but they had just started their foundation. And I said, well, I'm going to call them because we ought to partner between them and, and us. It's a baseball field. It's a baseball field. It's, a, it's, a, it's, <laughs> it's where they all played. And it's where their we were, dad spent 35 years of his life. Right. right. <laughs> serendipity. You were using the word serendipity. It just turned out that they had decided that one of their core strategies was to build, build youth development parks around the country. And they're trying to figure out where, where they were going to build the first one. So I said, like, I, I know where you're going to build the first one. It's going to be where Memorial Stadium was. And I, um, so I ended up talking to, to Cal and Bill. Uh, and this woman, Carrie Lee. Owner of the Orioles, Cal Ripken. That guy. That, yeah, that, now that, right. they own. I love saying that. And, um, the new and improved it's Orioles. It's great. Um, <laughs> we can talk about that later if you oh, want. We, but I, I, I um, want to. I, we can talk about that all afternoon and with Luke and Rasig. It was immediate for them, too. Like, there was no... Everyone we, sort of realized, right. how could we not do this? Right. And so they built... Uh, 
they f helped raise the money, and then, you know, we jointly, they, we got this beautiful turf field built. It's, it's a baseball, but multi-purpose, so any sport. The cross is played there. Everything, right, sure. cross, soccer, soccer, football, and it's beautiful, and they named it after their dad. You know, uh, so it's and that's a, beautiful. That's exactly right. So it's the Cal Ripken Senior Youth Development Park, and I'm ready. I'm ready. So I'm not, I, 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 you're going to see I'm that spiritually ready. And I will tell you <laughs> one other story related to that. And we'll move on. I didn't on. like going there that day with you're Brooks gonna Robinson. You're going to like it. I, well, I just you're going to like it now. You're supposed to like be a stadium, and my right. dad's supposed to be alive. And you're going to like and it And the Colts now. are supposed to be. I'm not going to be a get off my lawn right. guy. I mean, I'm all for change. It just took me it took emotionally. A, a little while. And to the Orioles, you know, to the credit, they built something called Camden Yards, which turned out to be a beautiful ballpark. And, and we shall host a parade there that John Angelus will not yeah, attend. Exactly. I've been saying that for a long time. John Hoey's here. Uh, he is the why. Uh, and, and not like the village people like my belt buckle, but um, what can people do to help participate, stop? Probably the one thing they could do in our audience is drop by a Y and see what's going on. Yeah. Because that would be the first ticket yeah. to say, it, it probably isn't what you remember or think it is, right? Yeah, and I, I would say, what can you do to help? I mean, join the Y. I mean, it's good for you. It's good for your family. And it is funny. I mean, I've had that experience with folks. They've come into Y's. Um, I brought them into our Y's. And they look around like, oh, my God, I, don't, I couldn't, can't believe this is so beautiful. I'm like, of course it is. You know, we, we don't do We're this. We're proud of this. <laughs> we do. What we, when we do a Y, when we do a program, when we do it, we do it first class, first rate. In my view, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you came from. I didn't come from much. I can tell you that. When you walk into a Y or you walk into a Y program, I want you to feel like a million bucks. I want it to be beautiful. You, we all deserve the best, right? So... You're not going to have gold, you know, plated toilets there. That's not what I'm talking about. But state-of-the-art, beautiful, uh, bright spaces, welcoming people, clean, modern equipment, interest engaging programs. You're going to see people from all sections of society. You're going to see the wealthiest people in Baltimore as members. You're going to see people in the middle of the income bracket. You're going to see people at the bottom of the income bracket. You're going to see all races you're going to see all parts of our society. That's who we are. There aren't many places you go anymore, Nestor, where you get to see all of our society. We've kind of sectioned everything off. Just well, I think the plague broke right? us down, too. Last time I think I was with you, it was some dark days. And yeah, and that made it that worse. Piece up, that you know? just exacerbated it. So, um, But also so it illustrates gonna, a need for, for you, though. Yes. Right? I mean, that, you, we talk about the problems with kids in yes. summer, and yeah. I, I've been talking about early childhood education with other people last couple yeah, of yeah. days, and um, th there's more of a need forever after the play. And that's why I did the crab cake tours. All these places needed yeah. business more than ever well, after the plague, and, it, yes. and, and conversation and, and what right. I do for and a living. Exactly. That's, well, you that's do what for I wanted living. to do. Coco's, yes, it's a restaurant, bar, great food. Fabric of the community. But it's a community. People come here not just for that. You could sit at home and eat a crab cake. They and they here. encourage you to pick them up in curbside. And, I'm, I, and by the way, <laughs> I'm going to take one on my way out for lunch. Don't do what I did and put it in the toaster oven and try to get it out with tweezers. No, no. Don't do that. It's, I'm going back They're to my office. They're still mad at me here that I, I dropped a four-ounce crab cake, and <laughs> I had to tell the story about it. Yeah, you I'm can't still, do that. still got the shakes from that. Can't do that. Um, so, you know, it. so you could join the Y. I mean, you can... Um, uh, Engage with us. You can run the turkey trot. I mean, we... Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. What, 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 that's in Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving morning. All right. All right. That's your big... That's your Super Bowl? <laughs> yes. Um, last year, we had over 15,000 wow. participants in six locations. Um, that's a lot of people. The governor came two years prior. He was supposed to come this Thanksgiving, but he got sick. Uh, unfortunately, um, it is one of the largest events in the in the state. Uh, we uh, it's a lot of fun. It's run Thanksgiving morning, or as I said, six sites around the region. No, one you got to run before you one eat. of those is Weinberg. Is that the <laughs> Weinberg Y, by the way? Um, and there's um, and so uh, we get a lot of engagement that way. But you know, I've read a stat. I don't know if it's a, true. I'm not one to propagate you know, misinformation, 
but I've read it in a couple places, so I think it's probably close to true. Uh, it said 70% of Americans have had some experience with the Y. Okay. And um, so there's lots of ways to engage with us. As I said, as a member, as a, somebody who runs the turkey trot every year as part of your family or neighbor tradition, um, you might use us for uh, as a preschool. Uh, you don't have to worry about that anymore, but, you know. <laughs> my son's 39, and people he, were asking me yesterday. He has to worry about it. I had some friends that are grandparents that are my age. I'm like, okay, here right, we go. Here right. we go. Time's now. Um, your kid may be in uh, an after-school program in their school that's run by the Y. Um, summer camp. Well, you keep saying Weinberg. I've had Harry and Jeanette Weinberg Foundation on yeah, what yeah. they've done to Y. The philanthropy, and um, I should have had Matt. Gallagher on from Goldsecker this week to really because he's uh -huh. so good at talking about that part of what right. happens for people like you that these really rich old people from a century ago left a whole bunch of money behind right. and all these years later what was supposed to be done with it is helping somebody right over here at Memorial Stadium yes. do right. something today right and the Weinberg Foundation obviously they gave a lot of money to that project but they support us on an annual basis and they support all our youth development work because they know how important that is. And we get great support philanthropically. It's never enough. I mean, we all know that. I mean, it's, um, there's a lot of great organizations out there, and there's a lot of things that need to get done. And there's a lot of, there's foundations, there's a lot of people who support us. But, you know, people think, I've had people tell me, like, why do I give you money? You, you know, you have these big facilities and members, you know, that's, you should be fine. And it's like, no, nah, membership is about 50% of my revenue. Um, and I put, you know, everything goes back into our facilities and our programs. We rely on philanthropy. We, you know, we have a, we have a pretty large budget. We, we, our budget is over a hundred million a year, but you know, uh, about, 18. 100 million locally, Central Maryland? Yes, West. just Central Maryland. Oh, okay. Wow, okay. All I right. have about 3,000 employees, so we're huge. To make that all work, about 20 plus, 20% 20 of that is, is philanthropy. Okay. Otherwise, it doesn't work. I can't, like, I keep my prices low so that people have access. I scholarship people who can't afford. My job is to get everybody involved. So if I was running the Y as a as a for-profit entity, and I have some experience running for-profit entities, and the, the model would look different. And I wouldn't spend any time worrying about getting people with lower incomes in. I would just focus on people at a certain income level and above. Well, that's what we're getting but, with sports and different things. Yeah. It's like you can't afford to play, right? Yes, yes Everybody exactly. can afford to play at the Y. Everyone can afford to participate. And that's, that's at our core who we will always be. And that's why, you know, we have so many, we have people who get what we do and why we do it and how our model works who fund us. It's a more complicated story than someone that does one thing in one place. And we need people to do stuff like that. So it's not a, one's not better than the other, but our story's more complex because we do a lot of things and we do it at scale. And there's a perception by some people that oh we you know we uh, we have all the money we possibly need through membership. Or there's a money tree. Yeah, like we're just printing uh, money uh, in the uh. back somewhere. John Hoey's here. He is the why, and uh, you know you can ask him why. Go find him. We're doing a thing here for the Maryland Food Bank today. We are at Coco's. We're doing live radio all week because I'm crazy and it's old school. And it really feels right. Uh, if you want to stop by, bring canned goods, dried uh, goods, all that kind of stuff, we would love to have that here at Coco's. We'll be at State Fair in Catonsville on Thursday. Friday, we're going to be at Pappas in Cockeysville. It is a cup of soup or bowl. I'm clever, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. If you say that real Very fast. Uh, we used to do Radio Row out at the Super Bowl. Yeah, and yeah. I've already pointed out the weather's better here. 
Um, so uh, we're at Crab Cake Row, and it is a couple Super Bowl. Our friends at the Maryland Lottery, I feel like Oprah. You get a lottery ticket, John Hoey. Right. Uh, so there you go. Ten times the cash. Our friends at Window Nation, 866-90-NATION. I got the wacky hat. I did windows a year and a half ago. I'm saving money right now with my electricity. I'm going to do doors this year because I, nice. I can see the, do, the daylight under the door. Oh, yeah. So I need to do something about that. Also, Jiffy Lube Multi Care supporting us. Our friends at Wise Markets and Royal Farms sort of put me up to this. I saw Jamie Costello. I was shopping at Wise at Utawood back at Thanksgiving time, uh -huh. and my, my wife parked away from the front door, and there was three giant tents set up, and Jamie was doing a live thing with right. Carmen Del Guecho, who's going to be on the show, first thing Thursday morning at State Fair from the food bank. And Wise has been my partner forever. And I don't yeah. know, the, the seeds of all of this, I cried about it on Monday, but I can tell you, my dad stood in soup, soup lines in 1929. My dad was in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Came down here to work on the bombers. That's how he got here in the 40s in Essex. Right. And my dad would always say to me, my dad never voted for a Republican after Herbert Hoover. So he always <laughs> thought the song, that all in the family, you know. Yeah, those um, were the we, days. Yeah, right. We, we could use a man like Herbert Hoover, Hoover. again. Yeah. My dad would just curse a blue streak in the <laughs> 70s about that. So um, but my dad starved in the in and, you know, after the Depression, 1929, 30, right. and stood in soup lines. I haven't spent a night of my life without food. But you know what I mean? And, right. And all along the last two days, all I've heard about are kids that are going to bed hungry, hungry. in this city and in this area, in, in this, this region. In this in, region. In, in it's every not just the city. In every neighborhood. People think it's just the city. It's across the place. And by the way, we, we partner with Maryland Food Bank. Carmen's an awesome guy. Um, we actually have put uh, food pantries in several of our wives. Good. And... We, we do a lot of uh, work in food, the food insecurity world. A lot of our community schools, we, get, we have food pantries there. So um, I understand that issue. I agree with you. I mean, and organizations like ours and Maryland Food Bank, we know we can work together to get a, more done than by working separately. So there's a lot of good stuff that goes on in this community that people don't understand. And it's not just one of us doing it on our own. It's it's. It's banding together to do stuff that needs to get done. No, well, that's why I did this this week. I mean, I just felt like we're gonna we're not gonna go to the Super Bowl and do that after 27 years. We're gonna do something bigger and better and more local and yeah. more meaningful. And you know, all these years doing Super Bowl, I'm gonna run some of that next week, some best of. And you want to hear Dan Marino or Joe Montana or any of these people right. we had on the show? They all had a cause. They all sat down and they yeah, yeah. they were doing this for that. And oh, by the way, this is for the kids or this yeah, is yeah. for edgy. Yeah, you know, I mean, every, there, there was always an angle. I do this for the why or you yeah, know yeah. whatever that angle would be for people. And I thought, well, you know, if that that if if I'm going to be blackballed by the National Football League after three decades, I'm going to be very welcome at Coco's and at State Fair and at Pappas and at yeah, yeah. Fadeleys and at Costas, and we're going to do a good turn. So I appreciate appreciative of uh, your friendship over sure. the years. I think I met you in the hallway at my house 20 years ago. Am I correct? In Entirely that. possible. They, they were throwing a party at the. There was a condo that was a, a, across the hall. Yeah, yeah. They did a holiday party every year. I think um, that's right. It yeah. was. Um, it was an insurance group, Zurich. Zurich Insurance owned the condo adjacent to my hallway for years, and they sold it to a regular person years yeah. ago. <laughs> but you were at a, at a at a holiday party, and I was in the hallway, and I saw you. Mm -hmm. So uh, twenty years later, it's great to have you yeah. on and learn. And neither of us has aged. That's a great thing. We'll go to that Mets Orioles World Series. Yeah. Second generation. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. You have any 69 memories or no? You, I you... have a lot of 69 memories. Let me tell you a quick story. Well, uh, I'll tell you, Ron Swoboda was never welcome back here. Yeah. I'll tell you. <laughs> well, we you never know, let him east of Fells Point again. <laughs> I was 10 years old. Um, huge Mets fan. Metsy. Mets. Mets were terrible. You know, they, had, uh, they were terrible. They were new, still a new franchise then. Um, we had moved to upstate New York by then, so I had moved out of the city. Was your family Dodgers Giants or no? I, I get my baseball roots from my grandfather on my mother's side. He was a New York Giants, Giants fan. A Polo fan. Guy. They okay. lived in northern tip of Manhattan right by the Polo Grounds. Okay. So he transferred his allegiance to the Mets, and that's how I became a Mets fan, right? Like, we know that that's sports gets passed down from generations. Of course it does. Right? That's where you, so that's where I became a there Mets fan. There are still Dodgers fans in Brooklyn somewhere. There are. Not as many because for a lot of reasons. So, um, so anyway, uh, we had moved to upstate New York by then, but, you know, I was living and dying every game. Back then, not the, the games weren't on TV as much. So well, then my, you got OR and you got hooked up. Oh, yep. Transistor right. radio, listening to every game With at Ralph night. Ralph Kiner, manufacturers, yep. Lizzie Hanover. Nelson. Right, exactly. There you all go. those guys. And so, obviously, they went on 
won the World Series. Nobody who was a Mets fan expected any of that. So after the World Series, the Mets went on sort of a little tour around the state, right, to uh, celebrate. So they came up to a, a shopping mall in Albany, New York, which is near where I was living at the time. When you say they, is this like Ed Crane Pool? Or yeah. Is this like, okay, all right. A lot of the players. Okay. It was a lot. It was a real caravan. It was, and all right. it was, you know, the old style shopping mall inside. So they kind of, they were in cars and they kind of drove around the mall. And we all stood there, you know. So like, it was a parade. Parade. All right. And so since you're a 10, when you're a 10 year old kid, you're so ecstatic that A, your Mets won, and B, they're right there. I jumped in one of the cars. It was Jim McAndrew, who was a pitcher. <laughs> and, like, I couldn't control myself. I was so excited. So instead of just standing there, I jumped in the car with Jim McAndrew. And um, he was very nice. I think a cop kind of told me I shouldn't be in the car. <laughs> I had I'm sure a, my parents were mortified. There but. was a picture <laughs> circulating last week uh, that someone here locally found that put on one of the Heritage sites. And it's Louis Aparicio in the yeah, 66. Yeah. He's in a, in a car yeah. in the 66 parade. Well, that's and very much how they like, used to do it, right? right? I mean, that was, and it had his name on the side yes, of some exactly. beautiful blue Impala right. from 1967 or and something. And everybody. There was, it is right there. I don't know. Can you tell me what I kind of car it. that is? Oh, but there's gosh, Louis, the sure. Carling Brewing Company. Yeah, I'll yeah. show that he to you. He had a sponsor. So, right. yeah, yeah, there was a sponsor, and there's the car, and I there's Louis. And Louis was in the 60s. So this is exactly Same what you're thing. talking about, Same right? Thing. Yeah. Right. And again, imagine you were 10 years old. You might have jumped in the car, right? Well, I've done a couple of parades here. We thought we were going to have some parades last yeah. year. We won a couple of divisions around here. Yeah. i got to let you get out of here because Marcel right. is going to come on. Marcel is doing this whole thing that if you want to come over here and give cash to the Maryland Food Bank, she's going to hook you up with, like, a $25 gift card. So um, we're very appreciative of that. So come on over, give some cash. Come on over, bring some canned goods. Come on over, bring some dry goods. It's all from the Maryland Food Bank. It is a cup of Super Bowl. We're calling this Crab Cake Row. And John Hoey's about to have his mind blown here because he's got the Weinberg thing right over at the 30. Third Street in the Cal Ripken Senior in the B -B -B, and he can walk here. You might have to walk back if he eats this 11 ounce crab cake over here. But you're about to have your, your world change here today. We'll get you a cup of Maryland crab soup. Yeah. We're gonna get you a crab right. cake. And uh, if uh, tell folks how to just go to the Y, right? Yeah. Just go to the Y. Yeah. Bim. Okay. All right. All right. A lot Thank of people you. have websites and this and that. You keep it nice and simple. Our yeah, friends yeah. at the Maryland Lottery are keeping it simple. Ten times the cash. I'm giving these away all week as well. We'll be at State Fair all day Thursday. Pappas and Cockeysville on Friday. <gasps> on Saturday I'll rest, and then on Sunday I don't know if you. This shot. They're playing a big game. It's a big game yeah, out heard in that. Las Vegas. It's the 58th time they played the big game. We're going to be at Hollywood Casino there in Perryville. There won't be any purple in that game. My wife and I went to Hollywood Casino for the Flacco. It wasn't we, – we saw the Flacco when they lost. Yeah. But we were there because we, we didn't want to get Peacock. Yeah. So it was, it was an anti-Peacock thing. Yeah, yeah. So we went up there on that Saturday night and watched that awful Chiefs-Dolphins uh, disaster in that four-degree yeah. day or whatever. But we started playing with blackjack. We got to, you know, so we're going to be up Sunday night at, um, even though we're not in the game, and Tay-Tay's going to be there and all that on the big screens. We'll be <laughs> at the sports bar and the sports book. Hollywood Casino. You can bring your kids. It's uh, it's outside of the casino, but adjacent to the casino. You can send them over to Great Wolf Lodge if the flood's done, and you can sit down and watch the game and have a proper cheeseburger. Uh, uh, my twin girls and my wife are going to the the lodge this weekend with friends because my girls, I have twin girls who turned 14 this. Well, so you, you bring them up and about 3.30, 4 o'clock, come on over, I'll buy you a beer, we'll watch a pregame right. show. And they're beautiful. I mean, it's it's a Vegas-style yeah, yeah. facility. I mean, it's beautiful. So come on up, Hollywood Casino, Perryville. Ample free parking, uh, and you can beat the toll and see the, the beautiful eagles up there now. The eagles are all nesting on the Conowingo. Oh, so wow. my wife and I are going to go up a little early and eagle watch because you – you will see an eagle. If you wow. go up there, and you, you will see an eagle. If eagle. you look, you'll see an eagle. You'll see the nest. You'll see the juveniles. It's a beautiful thing. They're, they're right by McFall's Iron Horse Tavern to give a free plug to uh, my, 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 my buddy uh, uh, Glenn over there. Um, if you go north on Cromwell Br Bridge Road from yep. McFall's, there are nesting eagles along the waterway. Wow, just up that's, be that's between wonderful. There that's and awesome. Like, yeah, yeah we, we, it's near the radio station. We go out on Sunday mornings and watch the eagles this time of year. Yeah, uh, yeah. And it's not the Philadelphia Eagles. I was going to say, well, there 
their home, too. Yeah, it's not the Coppin State Eagles either who are partners. <laughs> All right, uh, we're near Morgan State. Uh, don't tell my Coppin State friends that, but we're over at Coco's. I'm getting a, a, a crab cake as big as my head right at 501. But between now and then, Luke Jones will be here. Mike Rosigliano is going to be here. We are going to do some brain injury stuff later in the day, and we've we've done some community and charity here in the morning. But we're going to do a lot of sports today, man. I, I like I haven't had Luke in all week. Yeah. I don't know if you know the baseball team was like is going to get sold. So there's news, and we got the football thing happening That's too with all news. the Ortizes and the Anthony Weaver and the, 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 the Mike McDonald's. So uh, we're Sig and Luke. Lots of sports today. But uh, So stay with us. It's, uh, it's officially 11.45 right now, but uh, we're at Coco's. Come by and say hello. Back for more on WNST right after this.